this extremely important indicator is absolutely screaming that recession is coming, Michael Snyder reports. A lot of the talking heads on television seem to think that the threat of a recession has passed. So exactly why have these talking heads come to such a ridiculous conclusion? Well, they figure that if a recession has not started by now, we're probably in relatively good shape. In other words, they're speculating instead of conducting a hard analysis of the numbers. And the numbers are clearly telling us that economic conditions are rapidly getting worse. Of course, the U.S. economy has been on shaky ground for quite some time. We had a recession in 2020. We had another recession in 2022, although the Biden administration refused to officially acknowledge it. And now it appears that we're entering yet another one. In fact, if the Biden administration was given us honest numbers, they would show that we are already in a recession right now. But it would not uh, be too long before things will be so bad that even the numbers given to us by the Biden administration will clearly show that we have entered a new recession. It's just a matter of time. There is one extremely important indicator that has been absolutely screaming that a recession is coming. 10-year bond yields have now been below 3-month bond yields for 212 trading days in a row, and such an inversion has telegraphed the, the last eight recessions. But for 212 straight trading days, no matter what the indicators have said, the Treasury market has delivered what is widely understood as a starkly different message. The economy is veering towards a contraction since 10-year yields have held below 3-month ones. Such an inversion telegraphed the last eight recessions, and on Thursday the market surpassed the 1980 record to hold that way for the longest consecutive daily stretch since Bloomberg's records began in 1962. Does anyone out there actually believe that this indicator will be wrong this time around? Of course it won't be wrong, but there have been times when the inversion has happened quite a bit before the recession arrived. Moreover, the yield curve sometimes inverts long before the contraction. In July 2006, the 10-year yield started holding consistently below the three-month rate, but the downturn did not start until December 2007. It appears that something similar is happening now. A very painful storm is going to hit our economy. It's just going to take some time to fully play out. Other numbers are telling us the same exact thing. For example, the Conference Board's Index of Leading Economic Indicators has experienced a losing streak that we have not seen since before the Great Recession. Many mainstay economic indicators measure the past. So-called leading indicators reflect what likely lies ahead, and the Conference Board's U.S. Leading Economic Index for July marked its 16th consecutive drop and its longest losing streak since the run-up to the Great Recession in 2007 and 2008. Of course, most Americans don't need to be told that rough times are coming because they can clearly see what's already happening when they walk the streets of their local communities. As I discussed last week, vast numbers of middle-class Americans are being pushed into poverty and vast numbers of impoverished Americans are being pushed into the streets. Earlier today, I came across an article about the horrifying homelessness crisis that Las Vegas Strip is now dealing with. The iconic Las Vegas Strip has a surge in homeless people sleeping on the sidewalks and makeshift tents as the city grapples with an affordable housing crisis. New images taken by Daily Mail show people curled up in the sidewalk and outside storefronts, with some keeping their minimal belongings in trolleys and encampments. Sadly, city after city all over the nation is dealing with similar conditions. One of the reasons why homelessness is spiking is because housing has never been more unaffordable than it is right now. CNBC recently interviewed a woman in California that's paying $1,600 a month to live in a tiny home that is smaller than the average parking space. Soong Yu pays $1,600 a month to live in a 140-square-foot tiny home in Santa Monica, California. She says the experience has helped her save money and became, become more mindful. Her tiny home, designed by architect at Minarch Design, is located about uh, an eight minute drive from the beach and smaller than the average parking space. This is the future that the elite envisions for us. 
They want to herd all of us into mega cities and have us live in tiny compartments like rats. The woman that lives in this tiny home is not exactly poor. In fact, she was previously paying $4,500 a month for her apartment in New York. Sung moved into her tiny house following a major transition in her life. Living in the tiny home has helped her realign with her values, get grounded and become more intentional in her life. Previous to living in her tiny home, Sung lived in New York City for over 18 years, where she paid $4,500 a month for her apartment. $4,500 sounds like a lot of money to you, but the truth is that such rents are typical in New York City today. In fact, the median rent in Manhattan has now reached $4,370 a month. The median rent in Manhattan in August was $4,370 a month, unchanged from the record high in July, according to data from brokerage firm Douglas Elliman and the appraisal and research firm Miller Samuel. Average rents also held their records at $5,552 a month. Needless to say, the cost of living has become extremely oppressive in many other ways as well. At this point, the price of groceries has risen absolutely absurd levels. The rate of inflation had moderated for a few months, but now it's starting to accelerate once again. A big reason for this is the fact that the price of oil has been going up. Oil prices climbed to their highest level for the year this week, extending a rally that has put a return to $100 a barrel sharply into focus. And indeed, some analysts believe crude prices could hit this milestone before year end. Unfortunately, I fully expect the price of oil to be, continue to increase, and in turn, this will cause everything else to rise in price, and our standard of living will get even lower. And this has happened at a time when economic conditions are rapidly deteriorating all around us. The months ahead are not going to be fun for most Americans, and the long-term outlook is even worse. I'd encourage you to do whatever you need to do to prepare for hard economic times because all of the major indicators are all pointing in the same direction. This is by Michael Snyder. He says about the author, my name is Michael. And my brand new book entitled End Times is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written six other books available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I have also started a brand new Substack newsletter and I encourage you to subscribe so you won't miss any of my articles. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog and of the American Dream and the most important news. And the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook, and Twitter. And any way that you can share these articles with others, definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. This is on the Economic Collapse blog by Michael Snyder. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I only support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.